Okay, this is the notes for section 1.3. Um, linear equations and two variables. So, this first equation, uh, for our first example, should just be review. Slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. First thing you need to do is find the slope. So, slope, difference in the y values, divided by difference in the x values. So what we are looking at is um, 15 over 1, which is just 15. Once you have the slope, choose one of your two points. It does not matter which. Y equals, we know the slope. What we're looking for is the Y-intercept. So choose one of your two points. Um, I usually just go with the first one or the one with the smallest numbers. Sometimes I try to avoid the negatives. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. So I'm going to choose the first one. Y is 9. 15 times X is 6 plus B. We're just solving for that unknown Y-intercept. 15 times 6. Uh, it's going to be 90 equals 9. We've got a plus B here. We're looking for that Y-intercept. So subtract 9, or 9 from 90. Sorry, other way around. 9 minus 90 and negative 81. There's our y-intercept. Slope-intercept form for our equation, y equals 15x minus 81. Done. Okay, the point-slope form, um, it's a way to get an equation for a line, and just like the name says, you're given a point and you know the slope. I never used to use this thing. I always did what we just did in that last problem. But the more I use this, the more I like it. Um, so how to use it is with this example. And now, you know, where it comes from, I guess real quick, the slope is y minus y1, difference in y values, divided by difference in x values, if you're given the two points. Um, if you just think of this denominator as a single quantity, you multiply both sides by that quantity, y minus y1 will equal the slope of m times that quantity of x minus x1. There's your slope intercept, or sorry, point slope form. Now, to use it, um, this example down here says write the equation in slope intercept form for the line that has a slope of 3 fourths and contains that point. So, how you use the point slope form? You're only given one point. So, you go y minus the y-coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x-coordinate. Subtracting a negative 12 is going to make that a plus 12. To put this into slope-intercept form, you just solve for y. So we're going to have a 3 fourths x here. 3 fourths times 12 is 9. We're just solving for y, so add 2. 3 fourths x plus 11. Kind of convenient. Um, it puts everything right there. All you got to do is just solve for what. So the more I use it, the more I like this format. You know, it's, it's another way to write an equation for a line, depending on what information you're given. All right, this example I'm going to do in a separate video. So look for that on my web page and, and go through it. Try it on your own, but also look at that video when, when I work through it. All right, some information about parallel lines. Um, you know, what, really what you have is this first one. That's the main idea. If two lines have the same slope, they are parallel. Um, this second definition is the same thing, just worded a different way. If the two lines are parallel, then they're going to have the same slope. So it just kind of depends on what information you're presented. Um, all vertical lines have the same undefined slope. So if they got the same slope, they're going to be parallel to each other. They're all vertical, so they're all parallel. Same idea with horizontal, but now a slope of zero for horizontal lines. Perpendicular lines, a little bit uh, tougher, I guess. There's more to it. You can't just say parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines, um, the way it's worded here, slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals of one another. So the idea of that... If one line has a slope of 
three-fourths, like in that last example that was worked through. The slope of the line that's perpendicular to it, and that upside-down T-looking thing, that's that just means perpendicular. Negative reciprocal, I'm just used to saying opposite reciprocal. A reciprocal is just flip that fraction over and change the sign of it. We started out being positive, the perpendicular slope will be negative. These are opposite reciprocals or negative reciprocals of each other. That means these two lines, if those are the slopes of those lines, those lines are perpendicular to each other. Okay, and then just some information about vertical lines uh, being perpendicular to horizontal lines and horizontal lines being perpendicular to vertical lines. Okay. So for this example, you are given this line, y equals negative 4x minus 2. Slope is negative 4. Write the equations of lines that are 1 parallel and part 2 is perpendicular. to the given line and goes through this point. So, our given line has a slope of negative four. If we're writing an equation for a line parallel to it, it's gonna have the same slope. Now, you're given a point. So you're given a point, you're given a slope. The point slope form works perfectly with this. Y minus the Y coordinate becomes a plus four equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate, which is going to make that a plus 3. Solve for y. So negative 4x minus 12. I'm going to solve for y, so subtract 4. So you got a negative 4x minus 16. There's the equation that is parallel to the given line going through the point negative 3, negative 4. For the perpendicular line, part 2 here, the slope of our perpendicular line has got to be the opposite reciprocal to our given, the slope of our given line. So opposite, we were negative, it's going to be positive. The reciprocal of 4, or sorry, of negative 4, you could think of that as over 1. So the reciprocal would be 1 fourth. And again, it's going to be positive. So there's our slope. Again, it's got to go through this point. So now we're at the same spot. Oops. Not an equal sign. Y minus the Y coordinate equals the slope times X minus the X coordinate. And you're doing the same stuff, solving for Y. Okay, I'll let you finish that one. Okay, for this example, the graph of this line is perpendicular to the graph of a generic line with an unknown value. For the sum value of A, the question is, what is that value of A? Okay, so what we need to know, we're talking about lines being perpendicular to each other. So we need to know about the slope of them, or at least the slope of one of them. So I'm going to solve this first equation for Y. So I'm going to add Y to this side. I'm going to subtract 4 to the left side. We got a slope of 3. So the graph of this line is perpendicular to the graph of ax plus 2y equals 8. If it's perpendicular, it should have a slope of opposite reciprocal, negative 1 third. Okay, we're basically going to do the same thing except for with this line and just keeping that generic ax. We got to solve for y. So, I'm going to subtract 8, I'm going to subtract the 2y on the other side, getting the y term by itself. Solving for y, so dividing by a negative 2. So we're going to have a over negative 2 times x plus 4. This is our slope, mx plus b form. Oops. That should be an M. There we go. All right. We know the slope of our perpendicular line's got to be the negative one third. So these two things have to be equal. Negative one third has got to equal A over negative two. The question is, what is A? So we're solving for A. 
multiply both sides by a negative 2. Negative times a negative is positive. 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. There's A. Okay, that's the end of the notes for section 1.3. Hope you enjoyed them.